In this lecture, I will show you how to access and display spatial data in ArcGIS and that is not so straightforward if you are a rank beginner, but essentially once you get the hang of it, ArcGIS is pretty robust for both storing data and displaying data. In order to add any kind of data, we need to go to this button, this particular plus button, which is for add data. And it literally says add data. For me to add any kind of data, I need to build a folder connection to it. So now I can add a folder like so. This will take a bit of looking into, but okay. So this is the folder where my data are stored. And if you store your data in a folder, then this is how you build a connection to it. And essentially the main folder has already been added in. I can't build a fresh connection, but what this will let me do is actually navigate to my folder and start adding data. And this particular folder, I have a number of subfolders and I can access those. So let us just access this. Ah, there you go. I've accessed a particular data item. And since I'm in a folder, I can navigate into other folders as well. Okay, let us just navigate. Okay, so I navigated into a subfolder and I read in a shapefile data. And as you can see, I navigated into two different subfolders present within the same folder and read in the data from those. And I could do this using the add data button. And essentially, if you are accessing a particular data source for the first time, you will have to connect to the folder using add folder like so, and then OK and so on. But obviously, this is not something I had to do since my main folder was already connected to ArcGIS and storing your data in different folders like this. This is my main folder. That is one of the most common ways of storing data in ArcGIS. And all those people who have taken my QGIS course, you will remember this is how we end up storing data for spatial data analyses. We end up storing our raster and shapefile data in given folders, usually on external hard drives. And that is how we access those data. But the beauty of ArcGIS is that this is not the only way of accessing data. I can remove these data by right clicking and remove. And ArcGIS is pretty robust for having a more sensible and sane data storage facility. And for that, we go into our catalog. ArcGIS desktop, when I refer to ArcGIS desktop, I'm essentially alluding to two different softwares programs that are provided within the ArcGIS desktop. Usually when I say ArcGIS desktop, I'm alluding to ArcMap. ArcMap is the place where we are going to process the data and Arc Catalog is the place where we store our data. Arc Catalog is basically an extension for managing the different data that we may have. And this is a very powerful feature. So now this is the particular folder I had navigated into. And as you saw, I was reading data out of different subfolders and that can be very messy. So what our catalog can let me do is form a subfolder. So these are my folder connections and I have these folder connections because I had previously connected my main hard drive to ArcMap using the connect to folder functionality. So that is why our catalog has a record of all of these. You will have to do it once with whatever hard drive you're working with and our catalog will have a record of all those folders and subfolders. And in normal course of events, you can rattle through those. But in our catalog, what you can do is to move to the folder of your choice and create something known as a geodatabase, which has the extension .gdb and this will let you store data from different sources in one location. So let's do this. This is my folder with a number of subfolders. And now I want to store relevant data from different subfolders in one geodatabase. I will right click into my folder area, new, 
and I will select a file geodatabase and I can rename it okay now I have created a file geodatabase in my main folder and I can read data from here so now I will add data from my file geodatabase let me just see what is the matter here okay I think this has been created in one of the previous folders that I had selected so anyway that is not an issue I can again go and create a file geodatabase from my add data button as well I mean that is sometimes a problem that does happen if you're trying to create your database from the arc catalog that's the conventional way of doing it but actually this is also a pretty intuitive way of doing things and now I can click into this but I don't have any data to add so now what do I do with the file geodatabase I'll just close my application and open it again like so a catalog because sometimes it is important to close and open the application in order to refresh it hmm okay so finally the file geodatabase database that I had created has indeed been recorded here and for some odd reason when I was trying to create it through the arc catalog the conventional way it ended up going somewhere else and there's nothing to be worried about you can always create a geodatabase from add data that way you have more control of where your data are going but anyway the processing and making this functional is something that you have to do in our catalog so now we will right click here and start importing different data so we can import a single shape file we can import multiple shape files and feature classes we use that interchangeably with shape files tables and raster data let me import raster data from different folders I'll click into hmm, let us see okay let me just read in this random raster from a given subfolder so I've read in this particular raster from a given subfolder let us I have another one hmm I have another subfolder I've read in another raster let me read in ah, this is I have so many subfolders and now you can see what geodatabase is letting me do if I have data for a particular project I can actually collect all of those data in one geodatabase like so okay that's done but the processing will take time ah one raster data it has already been converted to the geodatabase format and the others as and when they're converted I'll be able to see them here but essentially I can read in these data as you can see I've actually read in my raster data from the geodatabase like so and I can add different kinds of data as well so again I will import and now let us import okay there when you see raster to geodatabase that means all the raster data have been read in let us just cross check so there now you can see that the three different rasters I read in are actually present in my geodatabase and you can see them and you can read them into ArcMap now let us try to import shape files and again I can import multiple shape files from multiple locations okay so I'll go to another folder okay now I've read in two shape files from two different subfolders and okay my data have been read in and now I'll have to navigate back to my geodatabase so let us just see I've read in my folder and and I've read in the shape file data as well Ah, now we can see both the shapefile data and the raster data underneath and we can obviously now I've introduced you to two different ways of 
accessing your data in ArcGIS and as far as displaying goes there's not much to displaying if you want to the vector data they are being shown on top of the raster file because I read in the vector data later but it is difficult to do it now but if I were to move my raster data on top then my raster data would be displayed first so whichever spatial data layer is displayed here that is the one you're going to end up seeing and we can switch off layers uncheck check and if it's a shape file or anything else we can go into properties in display we can you know make it change the transparency so now you can see the outline of a shape file like the ghost of a shape file and everything underneath now these are some of the simple ways of displaying your spatial data in ArcGIS and there's another thing you should know about so if you work with ArcGIS data you will come across something known as dot layer shape files let me just quickly go in there like so for instance we have the TIFF data and then we have something known as dot layer shape file then what happens is that when we work with conventional rasters like so what it does is that it is showing me the different values from 0 to 9 and I can convert it into I can save it as a layer file and what layer files do is to essentially allow us to paint by number so I had nine different classes within my raster and through the use of a layer file I have been able to categorize it into its different categories so dot layer files that is another very intuitive way of storing and displaying data in ArcGIS layer files is not something that I'm going to cover in great detail in ArcGIS but this is something you should know and in the next lecture I will start demonstrating the other things you can do with ArcGIS and how it can help you get a better sense of your data and we will focus on finding and identifying different features present in our spatial data.